This is a blaring out with Eric Blair show coming to you from Pepperland Records in Orange County with Margarita Monet of the band Edge of Paradise. How you doing today, Margarita? I'm very good. Thank you for having me. Now, you were born in Armenia, then lived in Russia for 10 years, and at 11, your family moved to Texas. What was that like? Well, it was a big change, um, but I'm, I'm glad we moved. I mean, I am. I mean, I've been to a lot of different places in the world, and I kind of take it as an experience. I think it makes me who I am. It was a big change, but I adapted and took away from different parts. Did you grow up in a family environment that made you feel worthwhile and valuable? Yes, I'm very lucky to have a um, great family, and they always supported me in um, you know all my pursuits. <laughs> I started performing at a very early age, and my dad is actually a scientist, and you know maybe in he wanted me to kind of follow in his path, but he always, always supported me. What kind of scientist was he? Nanotechnology. <laughs> Chemical engineering, you know. What did you learn about the future of our world? <laughs> because, I mean, the nanotechnology scientists are the ones that are going to be ruling the future. Yeah, um, it's very fascinating. I'm actually... Um, I always love reading about all kinds of scientific stuff, but I mean, it's insane what technology has in medical fields and I mean, in space travel and anything, everything. It's all, you know, the future is it's scary in a way, but it's also exciting. What has been the biggest adversity that you've had to overcome to get where you are today? Well, in a way, I mean, this is a very hard business, <laughs> music business, um, but I think uh, you know, overcoming yourself, you just have to make sure you always, uh, you have to be driven so you can't get discouraged. Um, I think that's the biggest thing to overcome is just uh, kind of to face yourself and um, keep moving forward. What is face yourself? What does that mean to find that? I mean, everyone has their doubts, especially in this world where everything is so oversaturated with everything and there's so much competition, especially in this field. And it's easy to kind of fall into trends. And, you know, if you're a little different, it may be a harder path for you. And um, basically, you know, facing yourself is making sure that you don't, um, you know, you stay true to your art form. Um, and uh, you got to keep yourself inspired and motivated. What is the most frightening thing for you about the entertainment business? Uh, <laughs> well, frightening is like everything is turning into a s streaming service. <laughs> In a way, I mean, um, it's hard to say. It's always changing. And I don't know if it's frightening. It's just it keeps you on the edge a bit. In a way, you know, you always worry, like, am I, I am going to be able to survive in what I'm doing? But, um, I mean, I think that's like it with everything, every business you're in. You have to start, um, you know, at the bottom and you make your uh, work your way up. So I think music is, um, in a way, similar to that. Um, I think, you know, if you make music that you believe in, then everything's going to fall into place. How important is family to you? It's very important. Like, like I said, I'm lucky. I have a great family. And I think it's, um, you know, it's, you have to have a um, good support system, whether it's family or your friends. It's important to me. Do you think that your life as a kid, was it perfect? Oh, I don't think anything was perfect. I mean, when we moved away, you know, a lot of my relatives, um, you know, they're spread all over the world. So, um, you know, I've missed them very much. And, you know, it's not easy to start in a new country. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, so uh, it was definitely not perfect, but I think it made me who I am and it made me strong. So um, I think it enabled me to do what I'm doing now. What effect did the all-encompassing musical education, including studying classical piano from age four in Russia, have on your long-term mental and emotional well-being? Yes, I th um, I'm very grateful for, um, you know, studying that at an early age and just being emerged in that because it really it disciplined me and I used to practice you know uh, three to four hours a day and played music then I also went to like theater classes and like dance classes and like in Russia everything is very serious you know even when you're a kid and when I moved here I guess it taught me work ethic you know and I think that's very important you really you know talent and uh, um, luck is not enough you really have to put the work in and uh, you know that will you know help you get you closer to your dreams <laughs> so yeah I think that really disciplined me did you ever feel like a, you were a slave to the school system 
Uh, no, I don't think so. I always loved everything I did. I mean, I think about it and... You know, that, like as a kid, I took everything really, really seriously. I mean, I was like eight years old and I had like a, a piano exam and I used to be so nervous about it and mm -hmm. I took it very seriously. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, in a way you're like, well, a kid, did you have to put the kid through it? But I mean, I loved it and it really gave me the skills that I needed to do what I'm doing now. So, uh, I mean, I don't regret anything. I read it uh, in an interview that you said that um, if you didn't get good grades, in the Russian school that the teachers would, would mock you and they actually displayed your your grades for the other kids to see so there was no private so I mean was that traumatic for you to to uh, almost be in an oppressive kind of system you know when you're a kid and you grow up with that it's not traumatic because that's all you know uh. Uh, so to us it was just kind of like you know we tried not to get bad grades but <laughs> so I was lucky I got uh, decent grades but yeah I mean that that's why you know if you didn't do good you were kind of embarrassed because everyone could see it um, so you know I didn't know anything different it was weird when I was in school here and everything is so like I mean in a way we still you know kids know if kids do good or bad like uh -huh. which kid is bad but you know the teachers definitely are not like hey stand up you got an uh -huh. F you know <laughs> have you ever seen the movie Mean Girls yeah yeah so I mean kids can be mean yeah but like um, kids can be mean here too. Like oh, over that's there. what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Kids can definitely be mean, but uh, I mean, you know, life is mean in a way. You grow up, and this world is not very nice. So <laughs> you have to. I think you have to like train yourself to be able to deal with all that stuff. Yeah, it's important in life. You know. Well, so. what, what was the, what was the first inclination for you growing up that that the world was a mean place or that people could be mean what what what, ex what exposure did you have to that um well uh, okay so i grew up in the 90s in russia and it wasn't like all ex inclusive that i'm actually i'm armenian you know so my last name is armenian so um you know and i think i was the only one in, in my class so you know kids uh, you know at that time it wasn't very like oh you know it, it kind of separated you in a way so um, maybe some kids made me feel like, oh, I don't really belong, but, um, you know, you learn how to just, like, not let that get to you because you really have to kind of, um, you know, have that inner strength. So I was exposed to that. I can't say I was bullied as a kid because <laughs> maybe I wasn't because it didn't really affect me, but, um, I mean... A lot of the times, like, you know, everyone has, like, cliques and stuff like that. And I was not, like, the popular girl ever, <laughs> you know. I was always, like, the music kid. You know, I always had, like, other things to do. So, I mean, sometimes, uh, I, you know, if I didn't get invited to a party, I might have been upset or something. But, you know, I never really thought too much about it. I always had great friends. Where did you find that inner strength? Uh... Probably in my music and performing, because I had that outlet, uh -huh. you know. So uh, I think that's what, you know, even, you know, as I was older, to get through, you know, harder times, I, that was my outlet. What advice would you give to the younger you? <laughs> uh, to the younger me, don't worry, life's going to be very exciting for you. <laughs> Good. What one life event would you change if you could relive it? That's a really hard question because, you know, I used to be like, what if I did this? What if I did that? And then I had to just tell myself, you can't. Unless someone invents a time machine, which I'm like, someone, come on, <laughs> hurry up. But, um, you know, lately I just, I can't think like that. I don't know, what if I went to a different school? What if I didn't move to LA? What if, what if I stayed in New York longer? Uh, there's just too many things. What if, like my life, now that I think about it, all things that happened by chance kind of lined up my life as it is right now. So I believe in things that happen for a reason, just because the way my life is playing out. Um, I've never thought I would be in a metal band, <laughs> you yeah. know? 
So, um, yeah, I just kind of follow the flow, I guess. Apparently, you were in a girl dance group in L.A. before you met bleed guitarist David Bates yes. to form Edge of Paradise. How did you get into the girl group thing? And then how did David Bates kind of, like, save you from Maybe. that? You're yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I moved to L.A., um, I didn't know anyone. I just tried to do whatever I could, you know, to survive. So I was doing a bunch of projects. And I fell into this girl group, and there are great girls in it. We got this producer who's like, oh, I'm going to make you guys into pussycat dolls or whatever. So, um, you know, that after that, we kind of started working. Like, he was like, hey, do you want to make a rock song? And I was like, okay. And we needed a guitar player. And I remember we were working on the song, and we needed some cable. And there was a music store next door. So we went there, and Dave was doing a guitar clinic there. So we saw him, like, holy crap. He's He's amazing. He asked him to play on the song and he offered him like 50 bucks. Which really? Is embarrassing, but you know, I think Dave tells me now, he's like, you know, if you weren't there, I wouldn't do it, but I saw you and you know. <laughs> so that we met on the project and um, you know, he had a band with Robin McCauley mm -hmm. and he had a um, Tony Franklin, Tonk of Greg and Bissonette, Greg Bissonette. You know, they recorded a bunch of songs together and they were never released. And, you know, all those guys, they went on tour with different projects. So, you know, Dave always wanted to form a band that was his music, you know, to, with someone that can he like share the project and kind of take it all the way. And I was, you know, I wanted to have something that I could also create and take it all the way. So our visions matched up and, uh, you know, we really clicked and, you know, it's been Edge of Paradise ever since. Off the album Immortal Waltz, what inspired the lyrics to the song Rise for the Fallen. Let's start off with that one. Uh, Rise for the Fallen. I mean, it affects me when you read, you know, news that innocent people, um, you know, what's happening to them and how they're suffering, you know, like what's happening right now. And uh, it's basic. the song is about, you know, the innocents that gave up their life and, you know, how lucky we are that we're here. You know, sometimes we do things that are inexplainable and you don't know why that's happening, but that's life and, you know, that's, I guess, humanity. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a lot of innocence that get caught in the middle. Off of Immortal Waltz, what inspired It's My Show? Mm -hmm. It's My Show is, <laughs> I guess, living in L.A. Because you meet so many people, like, especially, you know, um, young girls are prey for the sharks <laughs> in mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And, you know, a lot... Uh, you know, I even remember like there's all these like guys that like hand you a producer that's a like card that says hit producer, hit filmmaker, and then they think it's gonna like get you in or you know whatever. But it's it's a song that's saying you know I know I know what you're thinking, <laughs> I know how you work. So and it's my show. <laughs> Where did you get the wisdom? To, to and the discernment not to fall into the traps that most girls coming to Hollywood fall into? Huh. I don't even know where I got that from. I guess uh, I lived in New York before and I just heard stories and uh, um, I, I'm lucky I can kind of uh, like sense people, you know, like uh -huh. sometimes you meet someone and you kind of can sense what their inner or motives are yeah. and I've always been good with uh, kind of reading people in a way so I think that helped but also like kind of knowing stories that <laughs> go on. So, you know, I can kind of smell them a mile away. <laughs> Good. Good yeah. job. The Blaring Out Show.